A while ago, we started a series called What's a Noob to Do, revolving around the Eoshin Wizard, because it's such a popular because it's such a popular quad to buy, especially for a beginner. Uh, it's popular because of its price point. It comes in, in some places, depending if you're willing to wait for it to come from the slow boat, depending if you're willing to wait for it to come across on the slow boat, you can get them for $200 or less for the kit. And it comes with one battery, the quadcopter, you know, a, v a VTX antenna, a full FPV ready quad, your transmitter, and it comes with everything that you need to really get started. Not necessarily configured and ready to fly right out of the box, and it does not come with goggles. But because it comes with all that other stuff, you know, it's a very, very attractive price point. You're not going to be afraid to take this thing out and fly it because it's not like it costs, you know, five, six hundred dollars. But that's why I chose this package for this series. And so in the other videos leading up to this, what I stepped you through are what I consider to be what I consider to be the steps that are really required to get the Eoshin Wizard ready for flight. It walks you through how to flash the firmware, how to set up the quad, making some minor configuration changes. Um, so instead of using PPM, uh, we would be using SBUS, maybe pulling off some components that make it hard for us to use or maintain the quad. Uh, for instance, the, the motor protectors, and just all those steps. And the last part, you know, you could go out and fly the quad at the end of the last video, and you really wouldn't have too many problems, if any at all. But there would still be one item that you would want to address, because more than likely, you would notice the quad drifting. You know, it might yaw a little bit in one direction, it might favor its right side or its left, or maybe even always seem to be in a forward or, or a backward state of motion, and you're always correcting it just a little to try to get it to a steady hover. And if you've experienced this, what you're experiencing <clears throat> are that your endpoints and or sub-trims are not set. And that's what we're going to focus on today, are setting our endpoints and sub-trims. Stay tuned. Okay, in order to accomplish this, we're going to need our receiver available. We're also going to need our quad, both plugged into the computer and plugged into a battery. And this is because the only way to get the receiver powered in the ESG Wizard is to have a battery plugged in. So once you've got all that, let's go ahead and pop into Betaflight. And let's also turn on our transmitter. And what I want you to do is make sure that expert mode is enabled. And I want you to pop into the receiver tab. And what you should notice when you move your sticks around is that they respond just the way we would expect them to. Yep, there's that arm switch. Okay. But you'll notice that when the sticks are centered, that they do not really appear to be centered in beta flight. And that's what we're going to fix. Basically when one, when any of your sticks are all the way down or all the way to the left, that reading should be 1000, all the way up or all the way to the right should be 2000, and when centered exactly in the middle should be reading 1500. What I want you to do on your transmitter is to hold OK, and we're going to hit up or down to go to our function setup. And in here, Go ahead and hit down one time and hit OK. And this is our endpoints menu. So what we're going to do, channel one, is our aileron or roll. And what we want to do is increase this endpoint so that when we're holding all the way to the left, it reads 1000. I shouldn't say increase. What we want to do is adjust this endpoint so that when we are all the way to the left, it reads 1000. And this one already does. Likewise, when we're all the way to the right, we want that endpoint to read 2000. Now, you'll notice when you press left or right on the stick here, that the arrow in the menu pops to either side, because, you know, that's the low end of the endpoint and the high end. So what we want to do on our stick, with our arrow at the high end endpoint, is to hold it to the right, and then we're going to press 
up. And we're going to keep doing this, watching beta flight, until that endpoint reads 2000. I think that's as close as we're going to get on this. Now, it wouldn't hurt you to have that at 1997. You know, you're not going to spend a lot of time out there at those endpoints. Now, to get down to the next channel, which is going to be elevator or pitch, we're going to hit enter. And then again, you can hit left or right to go ahead and get over to the other side. Now, at the low end, this is reading 1009. And so, we want to bring that down a little bit. All right, I'm going to settle for 1,003, and then up at our upper end, it's reading 2,000, so we're okay there. Let's go down to the next line. Now, this is throttle, so all the way down, whoops, go ahead and bring that to, I guess for now, I'm going to settle for 1999, and then all the way up. At our uppermost endpoint, it's reading a little high, and we're going to bring that down to 2,000. Okay? Now, right there, the only thing we haven't adjusted is yaw. So we're going to do the same thing there. Get down to channel 4. You can see yaw is reading 1,016. We're going to settle for 1,002 there. And then at the high end, we're going to bring that down to 2,000. All right. In order to save this, we're going to go ahead and hold, up, hold the cancel button. And that will save our endpoints. Now, the next thing that we want to adjust are our sub trims. So go down to the sub trim menu, hit OK, and then we're going to start over again. Here on the roll with the ailerons, we want the center to be reading 1500. So you'll see when you adjust this with this stick center, we're just going to take this up until it reads 1500. All right, let's hit enter to get to the next channel. This is pitch, and we need to bring it down a little bit. Let's do throttle. Now you want to center throttle, you know, to the best of your abilities in the center of the stick. Now there are some guidelines here that you can use to do that. And we're running just a little high on throttle. Okay. Now on this one, you can see there's a little bit of what we call jitter. See how it doesn't really settle on any one value, you're going to have that sometimes, and that's just a byproduct of the gimbals not being super high quality. Um, there's nothing wrong with these sticks. They're going to do everything you need for quite a while. And even now, I mean, I could use this controller, I could use this transmitter just fine and pilot a quad, no problem. But you're going to have some jitter. Believe it or not, I have jitter on my Tyrannus QX7, so on one channel, and it has the hall gimbals. All right, so last is the yaw. Now, yaw is already centered. It centers itself. So let's go down to channel 4. And let's bring that down to 1500 as well. All right. Let's hold cancel. And that's going to commit those changes. If we adjust sub trims, we need to check endpoints again. And sometimes if we adjust endpoints, we need to check sub trims again. So... Yeah, you can see that endpoint change. So let's go back into the endpoints. And let's start again with roll. Now what I'm going to do is stay between 1000 and 2000. That's why I'm going a little high on these.
Alright. There we go. Close enough. Oh, y'all. Duh. There we go. And we can see centered, they're still holding 1500. So let's go ahead and hold cancel. And that is how we set our sub trims and endpoints. So even though you can apply the same concept to other quads, this is exactly how we do this for the Eachine Wizard using the FSI 6 controller. So at this point, you should be able to go out and fly this thing and notice that you're not getting any of that drift. In fact, right down here in this preview, you should notice that the, the quad has quit drifting around. See how it holds pretty steady? It's exactly what you want. You're going to get a little bit from jitter here and there, but it is what it is. So guys, I want you to go out. I want you to get some stick time where you can, especially if you're in the northern states. It's cold right now. I don't recommend flying with gloves. You just don't have that tactile feeling on the sticks. You know, you really need to be able to feel them and the pressure that you're applying. Um, there's people that fly in their vehicles. If that works for you, that's fine. But I want you to be safe. I want you to fly smart. And I want you to crash happily.